and roll. What is up, everybody? Jason from jasonbrock.com, and I have the pleasure today to introduce a good friend of mine by the name of Dale L. Roberts. I often refer to him as the most knowledgeable person in the self-publishing realm. I don't know if Dale is going to, you know, he's a humble guy. I don't know if he's going to co-sign on that, but that's how I refer to him as. This man is absolutely, uh, his story is absolutely amazing. You can find him at dalelroberts.com, selfpublishingwithdale.com, and you can also find him on YouTube. You just got to type in Dale Roberts, self-publishing, he'll pop up. And, uh, you know, we could talk for hours. But anyways, what's up, Dale? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. You know, it's funny. You said that to me a long time ago, back when I was finishing up coaching with you. Uh -huh. I tried to buy more coaching from you. And you're like, no, you can give me your money if you want to. And you're right. like, and, and I eventually came back to ask you, I'm like, why, what's the deal? And you're like, you're teaching me things. <laughs> exactly. And that's what is funny about how our relationship developed. And we can, I, we, we did an interview and I'll link it in the, in the description below, but we did an interview back in 2016. We were talking before we recorded about our first interview, which I had almost forgot about, you know, yeah. um, but um, we talked a lot about your background. And since then, dude, I mean, you've grown your channel up to almost what 50,000 subscribers, you know, you've surpassed me and continue to climb, you know, can continue to climb the ladder. Yeah. Uh, 42,000 actually just crossed, uh, that, um, milestone yesterday. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a crazy journey. Yeah. Our last time that we talked was January, 2016. And, uh, we talked extensively about my background in pro wrestling. Cause I remember that was when you first discovered that you were like, wow, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> Some of the wrestling stories are legendary, man, for sure. Um, and like I said, guys, I like to lead with a little value. If you guys have any inkling to publish a book, to learn about self-publishing, if you've ever thought you had a, a, a book in your head that you want to get on paper, go to YouTube, go to the websites we mentioned previously, type Dale's name in there. Obviously everything will be linked and this guy will show you how to do it. He does it. He helps people out. He's doing a super cool project. We're going to talk about, about basically like how to take, you know, if you've heard of the show bar rescue, well, he's doing that for publishers. He's helping people that have like books that aren't selling totally revamping that. So we'll be, we'll be glad to talk about that, but yeah. Dale, um, talk about what you're up to, man. You're doing, you're doing the YouTube stuff. You're doing your, I mean, what, what's, what's a day-to-day -day life look like for Dale in, in terms of your, your business <laughs> life? Breakneck and fast. Uh, yeah. I, I tell you, um, this year has gone by in, in a blink and where 2020 has just been brutal. I, I'm not oblivious to the fact that it has affected a lot of people in such a serious way. So I don't make light of it. So I'm very fortunate that on the opposite side of the spectrum is my business and my business has flourished in 2020 um, because obviously I, I, people are looking for things to do when they were on lockdown. Uh, people are looking ways to earn more money and not have to be out a ton of money. So it's, it's been really crazy uh, picking up some sponsorships with the channel and also making a massive shift. I'm sure we'll probably mention at some point or another you, when you were coaching me, yeah, fun fact, everybody, Jason actually coached me back in 2015 to 2016. For the better part of about a year, we worked together. And um, back then, he really coached me to getting all in on fitness. Come 2017, I was just burnt out on fitness. I just, I had had enough. I had been doing it for a number of years as a personal trainer. And uh, I pivoted back in September this year here to publishing books about self-publishing. And that was through the Amazon self-publisher series, a three-part series. And um, that part has been eating up a lot of my time, energy, and attention. And uh, on, to the, uh, on top of that fact, you know, I've told you this, I'm running essentially three different YouTube channels, technically four, but the two of them is self-publishing with Dale and the self-publishing with Dale podcast. The self-publishing with Dale podcast is getting ready to hit. And I didn't tell you this yet. Personally, it's getting ready to hit the YouTube partner program. Um, getting ready okay. to about halfway to the goal of hitting that. So that means that I'm going to be able to start monetizing that through ads, uh, through YouTube AdSense. And then my other channel is live streaming tech, which blew up really, really big. That one's fully monetized. My game plan going into 2021 is to double down on YouTube. I'm going to end up doing another channel. And it most likely my gut is telling me I'm going to probably go after the fitness channel because right now uh, it's blowing up and I'm doing nothing to it. 
like absolutely yeah. nothing. Um, have you ever heard of Simon Whistler before? I have not. No. Okay. So Simon Whistler, he has a number. Hey, he looks like he's related to me. He's got black glasses, beard, and uh, a British guy who lives up, I think, in Canada now. Okay. He has a channel called Top Tens, spelled T E N Z. And okay. um, believe it or not, Simon Whistler started out on a podcast called the Rock and Self Publishing Podcast. It was huge. Like, this was like pre Jason days, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, he was twelve, huge. maybe. <clears throat> right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and he was actually kind of doing what I'm doing right now, where he was essentially building a lot of his business through self-publishing. But then he saw there was some type of appeal to YouTube and built out different assets. And he continues to do that. I think he has about a half dozen channels, maybe okay. more. And a lot of them are monetized. We're talking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers in total. So he's able to build out this huge brand. So where some people might think that Simon Whistler is strictly, you know, the top tens guy, he also has this other channel called Business Blaze, where he talks about different businesses that have the rise and fall of each one of them. And okay. I find it so fascinating because I look at Simon and um, he has a crazy work ethic. He has a team that he works with and he's smart because he knows that there's power in leveraging YouTube. So uh, I know that kind of led us down like a weird path, uh, but I, I don't know if I'd ever shared that with you about Simon Whistler, but no, you know, I'd like to check that out. I had a friend, uh, Jake, uh, Jake Slater, he's, he's getting into YouTube and he was asking me, he's like, man, is there people out there that have like created multiple YouTube channels that have been successful? I was like, I'm sure there have, and I don't know really anybody off the top. Well, you, of course, well, you, but, <laughs> um, you know, but this guy, obviously, too. I mean, Simon. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check his yeah. stuff out after after we get off of here. Um, but um, yeah, man, I think for you, like uh, watching your channel's growth, because you know my channel is all about entrepreneurialism and you know how people can make money, how you can work from home, how you can you know start a business, and um, you know what you started YouTube in what 16, real real yeah. heavy. Yeah, April 2016. I, I started then. I don't think I really got hot and heavy on it till about a year. Like 2017 yeah. was when I became obsessed. Yeah. And you were, I remember going to your apartment in Columbus, Ohio, which you've since upgraded. And I think you guys are going to take, go to another upgrade, right? If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. And the you other cool thing about, well. yeah. And the other thing about Dale uh, is if you look behind his head over there, you see a picture of his wife, Kelly. There she is. Yep. And she's also, uh, an entrepreneur as well and yep. you know i'd love to have her on the channel sometimes too she's she's a sweetheart she likes to bless my balls every once in a while <laughs> yeah but, she does um, it in love <laughs> yeah, for sure but um you know you guys work together and yeah. you know so i think that's pretty awesome you guys are able to work together and you know bounce ideas off each other and stuff like that but she has a channel too which i also link so it's just like you guys are the youtube family the first first family of youtube man you guys have so many uh so many different projects on youtube so um, talk about, okay, so how, how did you get your channel to go from, I mean, heck, when you started, obviously everybody starts at zero, Yeah. But, I mean, how, how has that growth gone? What, what would you say has been some of your best uh, tips you could give our viewers uh, about how to grow your channel from, um, from zero to 40K and probably 100K by, you know, this time next year, I would imagine. Uh, first, first piece of advice, lower your expectations. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you're going to look at some people that are overnight successes, or they appear to be overnight successes for some of them. Um, the people that are true overnight successes are the ones that caught lightning in a bottle. They found just, just, they are the unicorn of the business. They are the exception to the rule because a vast majority of people that create YouTube video content aren't very successful. In fact, here's a fun little stat here for you that I'd learned when I actually had crossed the big milestone of 10,000 subscribers. Right. And um, you know this as well, that only 20% of all, excuse me, hang on, really, really walk that back, 10% of all YouTubers cross 10,000 subscribers. Isn't oh, wow. that See, insane? I didn't that. Yeah, I didn't know that. So we're in rarefied air, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're we're considered before. bronze YouTubers. That's the okay. level we're considered at. So, okay, cool. um, yeah, so you're, you're in the top 10%. And, uh, so that just goes to show that it, it's a lot of work and you got to think there's millions upon millions upon millions of channels that 
never will hit that point. So I would say the thing is, is all joking aside, the lower your expectations type thing, you need to temper your expectations with the reality. I came into it. I don't remember I even said to you and you're like, <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to hit that hundred thousand subscribers yeah. in the next I doubt year. It, Daniel, and that's the last time I'll ever do it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, I, it, the way I approached it, unfortunately, it's such a niche topic of talking about self-publishing, yeah. especially the approach of just being a utility channel. And utility doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Utility channels are there to serve a purpose. Someone's looking for a solution to the problem. Soon as that problem solved, what's the likelihood of them sticking around? Not very much. Right. You go to a Graham Stephan, though. We'll use him as an example. Anybody can search him up. Graham Stephan does a lot of financial advice, entrepreneurship, and such like that. Mm -hmm. He's a bit more personality-based. People go to Graham for some utility purposes, but they usually go there to be entertained because he has the personality to do that. That's why he's getting close to like 2 million subscribers. He's blown up over the last couple of years. Okay. The thing with my channel and me starting out, I didn't hit my first thousand subscribers until it was about a year to a year and a half into my process. And it was when things started to click. I was like, oh, this isn't about me. That's the thing is when you're on YouTube, if you go into this going, well, this is all about me, you're going to lose. You know, and I'm just telling you this right now. You need to have who your ideal viewer is in mind and figure out what is it that they're looking for and how can you provide value. And also think about the path of least resistance. Don't worry about getting a bunch of fancy equipment, fancy software, a bunch of crazy jump cuts. Because I'm going to promise you folks, if you watch Jason and you watch any of his old content, you'll notice something really cool. He blew up big by simply pointing and shooting. That's that's the thing. He didn't have to do any. He kept his tank top on. He had his ball cap on. He didn't. He was just being authentic and being himself. And that is what really created his success. And I would say that anybody that wants to get into YouTube, just, just do it. I, I, for lack of better terms, do the damn thing. Just yeah. do it. Well, think about it like this, Dale. Let's say we're having this conversation or we're having a conversation in real life. And um, like I'm explaining something to you. And all of a sudden I throw up a picture of like a, a rocket ship. And then like, you're looking at the TV and it's like, that's how a lot of these, these channels are is like, they have all these crazy B rolls and jump cuts. And it's like, you know, I, I learned this from this guy, Kevin, oh gosh, I forget his name, but um, meet Kevin. He has a pretty big channel and he talks yeah. about that. Yeah. He talks about like, yeah, just like, you know, and I think you've went through that transition, like your first video, well, your, your maturation was like, you did like the real, like low budget. And then you went into like the, the green screen with the fake new <laughs> studio and the, and the suit jacket. And, and now, you know, you're just rocking the, 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 the t-shirt and, and that's you. And then you found yeah. your voice and you found, yeah, you found all of that, man, which is, and again, you know, anybody who's starting out on this and I'm kind of restarting it and I'm, I'm trying to figure out my path and which is cool about YouTube is the fact that, you know, Dale has mentioned that, you know, hey, I, I coached him. I started out like in, you know, we met up in Chicago, Kelly and, and Dale flew in from, uh, was it Tucson? Is it where you, Phoenix or Tucson? Phoenix. I always Phoenix. Phoenix. They flew in from Phoenix. We sat together in this Airbnb and kind of mapped out the the blueprint. But now it's like Dale's taking it so far and now he's like helping me out. So it's a, a nice, like, <clears throat> kind of a reminder in life, like when you, when you give good, you know, you're going to get it back, man. And so like, I always brag about you to, to a lot of people, man, and some other people that I've worked with in terms of like pe what, what you can do and look at what you did, right. You went from, you said a, a year, it took you to get a thousand people. Oh yeah. And most people would have threw the towel in dude, you know, it's crazy um, too, because now I'm at a point that I'll get a thousand within two, three weeks. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's, 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 it, it, and it's, it's a snowball effect by the way, folks. So the longer you are on YouTube and the more consistent you are in developing, de uh, delivering value, the more people are going to come and watch your content and you'll start to know what's working and what isn't working. Once you figure out what isn't working, you can push that off to the wayside. Don't do it again. Double down on the stuff that working uh, for lack of better terms this is something Jason taught me a long time ago. If you've got something that's working, go back to the well. That's the exact words you use. When you looked at a book that was like, you're like, what are you doing with all these other things? 
you were like, go back to the well on this. Just do more. I was like, what do you mean? Like, you're like, create more things like this because people want it. And I'm like, well, you had the stretch book that was like your main, your main thing, you know, and I, are those still on Amazon? Those are still on Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll have to link to those as well. Dale was a, <clears throat> a personal trainer and, um, you know, he's trained a lot of clients and wrote a bunch of books on that. And then now he's transitioning more into the self-publishing realm, as, as we mentioned, um, so obviously you're doing the YouTube stuff that would you say that's sort of your main kind of like fulcrum point of, that, that drives everything you're doing or, yeah. or is there, yeah, I was going to say, cause now um, the books that we didn't mention, you can see them in the background as well. If you just search Dale on Kindle um, you know, there will be, you know, a ton of books, not only for fitness, but also for self-publishing. So, yeah. Um, and, and talk about like your content creation strategy. Cause I know you've, you've gone through many different iterations. You've went from like what recording, like a video a day, maybe two a day. I don't know. To, <laughs> yeah, to it now. was at one point <laughs> that, that was just out, outright insane. I'm telling you, don't, don't ever do twice a day folks. You know, uh, it's, it's not for the weak of heart and anybody that, that does it, you know, God bless you. But honestly, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm just not going to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. My workflow works like this. Uh, thankfully I've got a video editor. He and I actually trained, uh, were coached under Daryl Eves, a uh, very big yes. name inside the YouTube content creator community. Uh, he actually, uh, personally, um, uh, consults Mr. Beast. Anybody familiar with Mr. Beast? Say so inside the comments right now. If, um, yeah, yeah. If you're not, then uh, you never you, heard you've it. Been living you, under a rock, right? As <laughs> soon as this video is done, you know, go over, look up Mr. Beast. You will just you'll have a lot of fun watching his content. Yeah. Uh, but Daryl uh, does consulting for him. But at any rate, uh, Dan, my video editor, and I actually got coached under him, and so we learned a lot of the methodology of getting ourselves beyond just being a utility channel and trying to pivot and transition it over to more of a personality driven one. And so Dan's always trying to pull things out, out, out for me. Like he's, he's just like, you know, you gotta be more of yourself. You know, he's like, just, just relax. He's like, you know, smile. Like there's a couple of times you call me out on it. He's like, no more doing 12 videos straight. Cause he's like, by video nine, you look yeah. like you're, you're tired and you're ticked off. And I, I was like, because you know, I am. <laughs> yeah, usually yeah. I am. Cause yeah. you know, I, I, you know, it, it's, it's a lot similar. of work, man. It, to, it is especially doing what you're doing. Cause you're actually teaching stuff and planning the videos out. Like if you're just BSing yeah. and doing like, you know, like a reaction video, that's another story, but you're actually like trying to like give people a value proposition, which, yeah. you know, that, that level of content is tough. It's the highest rewarding, I think. Cause like you can, monetize that in so many different ways but oh so you know, many ways yeah yeah and it's, it's so too. much more than beyond just the ad sense but the workflow works like this i usually get with dan about once every month and a half to two months and we sit down and we'll plan out about the next eight to 12 videos which usually goes out by about a month and a half to two months mm -hmm. and um we will look at some of the things that we're working and then we start to figure out ways to better do titles that attract more people and thumbnails that attract more people. And then he looks at it from a granular standpoint. He will look at it from a watch time perspective and he'll go, okay, he'll look at a video that he's helped kind of put together and he'll see where people are dropping off. Mm -hmm. And so he'll start to speculate and go, okay, we need to pull this. We need to pull this. Like for instance, I don't use a bumper anymore. There's no more bumper. I used to have a bumper. Now, anybody that's not sure what a bumper is, essentially it's a flashy logo and it tells you like the name of the person's channel. Um, and I did that for a number of years. We had tested out earlier on this year. We were like, what happens if we just pull that? Mm -hmm. What happens if we pull? We pulled it out and our watch time retention shot up because people weren't going skip, skip, skip. The next thing we also looked at was my intro monologue. I go into... You know, welcome to self publishing with Dale, where you're going to learn how to publish books itself. Make sure that you subscribe and scratch your belly button, hit the like, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. He was just like, How about this? He's like, What if you just go into things straight out? He's like, Forget the subscribe. I'll just do a visual type thing. He's like, Let's go right into it. This is contrary to a lot of what big YouTube experts will say to you is, Well, you got to say what your value proposition is at the beginning and hit subscribe. The problem is, the biggest deal when it comes to YouTube is watch time. Yep. Watch time's king. Subscribers, guess what? <clears throat> it's a vanity metric. 
you could see here, I could say here be like 42,000 subscribers. Jason can go like 11,000 subscribers. My buddy, Evan Carmichael can say two and a half million subscribers. Guess what? That doesn't mean jack to YouTube. What means jack to them is our viewers staying and consuming content continually. Yep. And when you can get your watch time down, that's when they start sending you traffic. Yep. So when I got good on not caring about myself, that's when I start, started seeing, it started just building up. It was just huge. Uh, and I'm just going back and looking at some of the stuff and I just kind of cringe because I was like, oh, that's why that video didn't do good. Or, oh, that's why I wasn't growing as fast on the channel. And even now I look at the content I'm putting out and I go, okay, why is my channel not performing as well as it could be? Notice I don't go, why is my channel not performing as good as Nick Nemon's channel or right. um, in any number of people, like yeah. Simon Whistler's channel, you know, yeah. I, I, don't, I only worry about myself because I know that no one's going to be able to deliver the same value that I do. I'm yeah. just going to have to compete with myself and get it to where I can become a better video content creator and people will come to me naturally in due time. I like that. So you took the bumper out because what you have like a five second bumper is like showing all your cool like little accolades and <laughs> no one much. cares, right? No one cares about that. Nope. They're like, hey, I need to figure out how the hell I can get my book to sell. How can this guy help me? That's got all these crazy pictures in the background. And yep. you know, and uh, so you do the lower third, like little like call outs to say, hey, like the video after they've already probably been on there for two minutes or whatever. Right. You correct. Correct. And if we can organically work it in, we'll do that. And anytime that you can organically work it in, you want to make sure it's brief. Like it's almost like it hits them and they go, oh, yeah, I need to hit that like. You know, or, you know, oh, yeah, I should subscribe to this. But I try not to make that the focal point because what ends up happening is, is people are coming there and it's almost like you're going to McDonald's. Do you know you want to go in for a, a Big Mac meal of some mm -hmm. sort, some combo meal? And you go on in there and you're getting ready to eat things. And then like partway through your meal, someone comes up and be like, hey, do you want to buy a shake? <laughs> no, I no, I'm, I'm good. No, no, you want a shake. Come on, get a shake. It'll be good. And you're like, can I just finish my meal first? You know, and then get it to where when the person's done, it might be a good idea. So that's why I usually will like bottom load everything mm -hmm. to where it's like, hey, you got this far. Make sure that you subscribe and go check out this other video. I'm right. usually like, that's my next thing is always go watch another video. Because remember, watch time is king. I want to get it to where it's like an endless loop. A lot of people will say to me in the comments, this is the funnest thing. I always, I love it because I'll see people in my comments that binge watch. I know I was one of your people that I used to do that where I binge watch all your stuff. Hey, and you probably you. see all your notifications where it was like Dale, 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 yeah. all the way through all your yeah. comments. I get some people that do it on my channel now too. And it's like, it always makes me smile because I'm like, they're binging my content. I'm like, that's probably one of the best things you can do for a YouTuber. Watch your content from beginning to end, leave a comment, hit a like, and then watch another one. Yeah, like if you really want to help us out, just put a playlist on and walk away for a few days and then come back and keep it on autoplay and just. <laughs> yeah, that's but the way yeah, to do it. <laughs> that's the way to do it if you really don't feel like you really watch it. But yeah, man, I mean, that the watch time is important. Um, the algorithm is everything, yeah. you know, because look, YouTube wants to make money. Uh, Google wants to make money. And the way they make money is those, those ads start rolling. Well, if they yeah. cut out of your video in one minute, those ads, they don't really, you know, they don't get to go through the whole thing. Nope. Um, are you a big person on following trends? Like right now the trend is like, let's do a 10 minute video because you can get all the, all the ads, all the mid roll ads and everything like that. Is that something you're hardcore subscribing to at this point? Um, I generally speaking, try to just deliver the value. Uh, there was a minute that I was doing some videos about 15 to 20 minutes long only because, um, I had that much content to cover. But in the same instance, I was also self-aware that when we went back, I was discovering that people really weren't watching that much. So I was like, why create more work for myself? I can do something in shorter form. So yeah, doing 10 minutes is great, which actually changed more recently. I'm not sure if you're aware, actually, they're now doing mid-roll ads of eight minutes or longer now. Okay. So it used to be 10 minutes. Now it's eight minutes or longer. You can have mid-roll ads tossed in there. Um, mid-roll ads is great you know, for us as, as content creators, because then it breaks up the content into bite-sized pieces. There are some people that will say, 
I can't stand it. Like those ads come out. But the funny thing is, is that pattern disrupt actually keeps a viewer's attention a lot longer. It's kind of like having a commercial on television, right? You get it to where breaks things up. That pattern disrupt gets it to where you go, you come out for a second and go. And even if you're like, ah, screw this ad. The nice thing is it resets your brain and you're ready to go and consume more of the content. Now there's going to be some people out there that are like, oh, as soon as I see an ad, I leave the channel. Yeah. Got bad news for you folks. YouTube just announced it. They are now starting to put ads on non-monetized channels. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They're starting to do it on, if you're not in YouTube partner program, they don't care. They're going to start putting pre-roll, mid-roll and post-roll ads. So guess yeah. what? Get ready. Or YouTube starting rolling out more ads. Get YouTube premium like I have, and then you don't got to worry about any of it. I, it. You know, we're not being paid to say this, but I'll tell you, I, I pay for YouTube premium, and guess what? Yeah. It's awesome. And here's the cool thing. When you get YouTube premium and you watch people's content, we get paid for that. So it's, so it's good. a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead and get YouTube premium, and then it's you like can what, be 10 like- 10 bucks a month? It's like nothing, dude. For I like yeah. to watch a lot of YouTube. I'm sure you do as well. I mean, I think that's a, another good thing about being a content creator is like, I mean, you get so many ideas just watching other people's stuff, you know? Yep. Um, and not so. be interrupted by the, the ads or anything else. Like I honestly, every now and then I'll open up incognito mode to do some research on YouTube mm. and I'll get ads that will pop up and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what that's like. <laughs> I that's completely forget. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a, a family plan and uh, I did a family plan actually for the business specifically, because I wanted to get it for Ava, my assistant. Yep. And then I got one for Kelly as well. And <laughs> um so I, I got it to where more people can kind of use my family plan. So that way it, it, they're not being inconvenienced. Because when Ava's working for me, yeah. I hate the fact that if she's doing work for me, she's getting interrupted by ads. Screw that. I'm not paying her to watch ads. I'm Get probably paying her plan. to go watch one of my videos, work out yeah. timestamps. You know, sometimes she'll watch an interview of mine and she'll try to summarize it for an email campaign she'll send out for it. So I don't want her slowed down by a bunch of ads that are getting, you know, broken up into there. So yeah, uh, it's, it really is. And, and honestly here, folks, like if, if you ever find yourself kind of going, ah, oh, I can't stand these ads. YouTube is allowing people to upload stuff to their platform. 100% free. Yeah. 100% free. And they're allowing people to watch stuff. 100% free. Right. Okay. And so they still have to pay the bills. Yeah. So don't hate on YouTube. They're, they're yeah. literally, they have to pay the bills. They need to pay for the servers. They have to pay for, you know, the staff that manages it. They have all these bills to pay. So when people sit here and go, Oh, well, yeah, they got to them. Hey, listen, folks, they've got it for good reason. Cause they have to pay their bills. And exactly. until they otherwise become a fully premium model, forcing everybody to pay for things, ads is the way to mitigate the issue. So that way they're not going out of business because otherwise I'll tell you folks, you know, YouTube could go away if we were like, say no more ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not going to be away from them to monetize. Exactly. Yeah, man. So speaking of like monetization, so obviously you get some AdSense money. Um, but I wanted to talk a lot of, a little bit about some of your other ways that you've monetized your channel. If you want to mm -hmm. get into some of that, I know yeah. the sponsorship deals, Oh, uh, the other thing I want to mention too about Dale, which is cool, is like you're mentioning like the eight minute, like the eight minute time frame, right? Like, you mm -hmm. know, like the the thing about Dale and why you guys need to watch his channel if if you're if you're just even remotely interested in like, you know, YouTube or self-publishing or any of his channels, this guy does his research. Like when I talk <laughs> to Dale, I'm like, he'll drop some knowledge, dude. Like, so like when I say he has the, the best, most knowledgeable self-publishing channel. Not only does he talk about Amazon, but you also like know every other book platform to publish on or every other like little tool or trick of the trade to 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 be more successful. But um, I just want to throw that in there. But OK, me talking about monetization, what other ways are you doing to, to drive more revenue to your channel? Well, we've got YouTube AdSense and let's at least dress this. So that way, if there's anybody that's watching this, that's not familiar with the YouTube partner program. If a channel hits 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours within a rolling year, they are then qualified to be part of the YouTube Partner right. Program, which means they can run ads on their channel and ads that will be before a video, during a video, or after a video, or all of the above. And there's a few other ad sets and such like that. And when someone runs the ads on there, you're able to get a fraction of that, that cost. And so I, I kind of like that. It's one of the nicer features. 
Um, but it's something I was told a long time ago. I, one of my favorite creators is Roberto Blake. Are you familiar with him? You told me about him. I don't think I've, I've checked him out. No, you got to check him out. Roberto's a fantastic guy. I would highly recommend him for a guest on your show one of these okay. times. Uh, but you know, he always is, is kind of the belief, like don't rely on YouTube AdSense because I mean, you think about, remember the adpocalypse you were around for that when yeah. it was just like ads would Shut just, everybody down. Oh yeah. And so yeah. that's when sponsorships became kind of a thing. And I'll get to that in just a second because sponsorships will put a pin right here for it. Cause we're going to come back yeah, to that in just a second. For sure. The next best way, I'm going to tell you this, that even before you get yourself monetized through the YouTube partner program, you should be looking at affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is just the most dead simple way of making a little bit extra money. No, so mm -hmm. I said a little bit extra money because you're going to have a small channel and chances are having a small channel means you're going to have small exposure, small amount of views and small amount of people clicking on offers. Affiliate marketing works like this. You've got a product. Maybe you enjoy, you like, you want to recommend people to it. You just get in touch with a particular company that you like that product with, and they will set you up with an affiliate marketing program. You send them to a link that is created for you. And when someone purchases something, their price isn't changed at all. They're going to pay the same price they would without your thing, but you get a small percentage of that. That's how right. affiliate marketing works. It's nice. It's kind of like if I were to say, hey, Jason, man, dude, did you catch out that that uh, that recent rock movie? Oh, dude, yeah, Dwayne Johnson, dude, he's awesome. Right. You got to go check it out. You go over to that movie theater, okay, and say, hey, Dale recommended me here. They're going to probably stare at you and go, what? But yeah, let's yeah. pretend like if they had an affiliate marketing program, they go, yeah, actually, here you go. Here's your ticket. And then they give me a percentage of that sale. The nice thing is you're supporting me while still being able to enjoy a product that I still highly recommend. So affiliate marketing, I'm telling you this right now, I've got a smaller channel and I, don't, I haven't told you this, my fitness channel, that's literally haven't touched any of it at all. Um, it has a video call uh, about the Iron Gym pull-up bar. You know those Iron oh, Gym yeah. pull-up bars? Yeah, I've got one. I've got a perfect pull-up, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you know, it hangs up on, on the thing. Door frame, uh, yeah. It's had like 30,000, 50,000 views or something like that. And mm -hmm. I would say I pull in about two to five sales of that per month over through the Amazon Associates program. Okay. Now I get only like 4% per sale. So it's not a lot, but I mean, it's passive traffic passive income for lack of better terms, because I did the work once. I just did an unboxing. I reviewed it. I showed how to use it. And the nice thing is this thing keeps bringing, I, I'm not even have that channel monetized. It's still generating Bringing in money a few extra bucks. And that's like on a small scale. I know you got bigger <laughs> affiliate programs you're working with, but yeah. Correct. Yeah. On the self-publishing with Dale. I mean, gosh, I have I mean, great deals worked out with Fiverr. Yeah. I've got great deals worked out with Publisher Rocket. Um, let's see your app Sumo. A number, like so many. Like as soon as you Grammarly, are in this are game, you still doing Grammarly, or is that affiliate? Is still that... doing Grammarly. Yes, yes. Yeah, Actually, and um, been a huge fan of Grammarly. Pro Writing Aid is another. Mm, yeah, I love me some Pro Writing too. Aid. Uh -huh. um, any rate though, yeah, you, you, the more that you're in this game, the more that you start to do affiliate marketing, the easier that becomes uh, for you to do. And here's the easiest way to do it here, folks, okay? Review video. Yeah. Now, don't make the mistake that I did because you're gonna get a lot of people that sit here and get snarky about you inside the comments. Okay, one of the mistakes is, if you're gonna do a review video, fully disclose right out the gate, I'm an affiliate. If you purchase something through this link, I do get a portion yeah. of those sales. And you can also disclose it inside your description as well. So that way the FTC is not coming over and beating you over the head. Um, but you know, as long as you fully disclose it and just go from there. Now there's gonna be some people like, oh, you only saying that because you're gonna get paid. You can never say the right thing to the wrong person and you're never gonna say the wrong thing to the right person. So just right. don't worry about the trolls, just go ahead and do it. Affiliate marketing, all right? Next thing, course creation. This right here is big. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care what, like who you are, where you're at. You have a skill set and a knowledge set that people would be willing to pay money for. So as if, for instance, when I got into the business of self-publishing, I tried to do it a lot of it on my own, but I knew I needed some help. Mm -hmm. That's when I stumbled on this guy's channel here and he had his course out. I bought it. I was like, yeah. he knows what he's talking about. I want to get the path of least resistance. I don't feel like looking for all of my answers all online. I'm just going to go ahead and get a course. Building a course is super, super simple. You can look at any number of platforms, including if you want to do it for free, you can go to Gumroad. Mm -hmm. You got Thinkific, you got Kajabi, you got Teachable. Heck, you can even do it on your own website and put a PayPal wall on it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Either way, doing course creation is big. And I'm telling you, like you can pull in a hefty chunk of change. I've known people that have pulled anywhere from five to six and even seven figures in earnings per year from doing course creation. Don't like, don't overlook this. This is so awesome. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, wait, hang on. If people are watching my videos on YouTube for free, what's the likelihood of them buying my course with other videos? Well, here's the thing. Someone who's going to be, first of all, building that no like and trust factor in you is going to go, I'd like to see more of this person's stuff. The big bonus they're going to get is, first of all, they aren't going to get ads served to them. Right. Beginning, middle, and end. They're going right to the stuff that they want without having to worry about, well, subscribe, like, scratch your back, call your mom, share it with somebody, you know, hit the like, uh, you know, yeah. leave a comment. No, they're, they're going to get the course that they need and they can go on with life. Now, let's just say you get somebody in courses. The next big step is going to be consulting and coaching. That right there, you're looking exponentially. So we went YouTube AdSense. We go into affiliate marketing. We go into course creation, and then we go into coaching consulting. Each one of these tiers, the further you go up, now every now and then affiliate marketing is probably going to move up to the top because it, it does pull in a significant amount of income. But as far as price per acquisition goes, the very top course uh, coaching and consulting is really big. Mm -hmm. Someone's willing to pay money to learn through a video course of some sort that you have online. Chances are pretty likely some people want to just say, hey, I'll pay you more if you just shut up and tell me yourself. Yep. That's going to be a thing. Some people want to be held accountable. And that was my biggest deal when in 2015, when I came to you, I just needed to be held accountable. I was like a fire hose just spraying everywhere, putting out all types of fires, but the fire was still growing. Right. Yeah, that was the biggest issue is with a coach or consulting person, they will grab that hose, point it where it needs to go. And then you can probably be able to see much better results. You can charge a higher premium. I can't tell you how many people out there that go charge $30 for an hour of their time. Mm -hmm. If you think $30 is how much you're worth, hey, all the more power to you. But my belief is they're taking an hour of your time you could otherwise do and creating more videos, doing more affiliate marketing, selling your course, uh, spending time with your family. So just remember that time you're spending and giving the knowledge and skill sets you have should be exponentially more because it took you a lot of time to curate that information. Yep. And now you're going to go ahead and concentrate it down and give it to them in a half hour, or an hour session, charge higher. Now, how much that's going to be, it's up to you. I don't know what your, your line of expertise. Now, last but not least, you, you, you knew this is what the part we're going to be getting into. I said, well, let's put a pin in it. We're going to pull that pin out. We're going to bring deals. it on down. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsorship deals and brand yeah. deals. Um, and see, the thing is, no matter the level that you're at as a video content creator or a someone who's on social media, everyone should consider going and doing sponsorship deals. And especially now more than ever. Because used to, you have all these companies that could go to trade shows and in-person conferences uh, you know, all these type of things, they had all this budget that was originally intended for those in-person events. Guess what happened? Well, They're lockdown came anymore. about, right. it's not happening. So they have this huge, big lucrative amount of money that's sitting here. How are they going to do it? Well, they could go and they could buy more ads through YouTube, or they can go to through Facebook and do some ads there. Or what they can do is hire some people that are quote unquote influencers. I hate using that word here, folks. I'm just going to use it because it's right. popular nomenclature. <laughs> but you have these influencers, people that could otherwise promote the product, be more authentic about it and share it with their audience in a way that makes sense. So sponsorship deals can be quite lucrative, yeah. can be very nice. And here's the cool thing. Never. And I mean, never, ever, ever agree to a sponsorship or an affiliate marketing program or do a course or do any consulting if you don't get 100% behind it. Because if you look at something and you go, oh, let's say, for instance, Jason Brock Realty gets a hold of you and they're like, you know, hey, we want to go ahead and we're going to hire you for $1,000 for a month and you're going to promote us on eight of your videos. Right. Um, let's say you never heard of Jason Brock Realty. Like, and you're like, yeah, screw it, we'll go ahead and do that. The problem is, 
if it doesn't make sense for your audience and it doesn't align with your brand, you're going to really water down your no like and trust factor, as we have shared before. You're going to get it to where you erode that trust that you have with your viewers and the people that are following you. And even if it's three or 30 or 30,000 people or even greater, it's going to erode that trust. So you're going to want to make sure that you align yourself with brands and companies that make sense and align with your core message. It's not all about the money here, folks. I can't tell you. I've turned down more offers than I've accepted when it came to sponsorship deals because some of them don't make sense. I've had, gosh, there was one company. Let me think here. I had someone get a hold of me, and I, I don't want to name any names. It wasn't right. someone big. Uh, it was some. It was some type of a software of some sort, and they reached out to me, and it was. It, it looked like it was a blanketed type thing, and I'm like, it's no, like no. I I can clearly tell you don't care about my audience. You don't care about my message because otherwise you would have sensed that before you sent an email to me. So yeah, uh, sponsorship deals are going to work like this. Now here's two ways you can do it here, Jason. And I, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you before. Mm -hmm. Here's cold prospecting and there's warm prospecting. You know the difference between the two of them, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Cold prospecting means you just, you go out and be like, talk to people you don't know. Like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Uh, Hershey's chocolate. You gonna you know sponsor my channel? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll the, please don't ever go and approach a brand like that. You gonna sponsor my channel? They, they def, <laughs> yeah. The answer will be no for sure. <laughs> yeah, unless you got a hundred million subscribers. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Exactly. So, um, uh, any rate, uh, you're going to when you approach these deals, cold prospecting and warm prospecting. If you had a choice. Jason, to approach in either fashion, warm being that you already know them, there's already some type of a connection between you and that brand, which would you choose? Would you go cold, cold or would you do warm? I mean, definitely warm. I mean, I think that you talked about some of the people that you're getting in your email inbox. I'm sure every day you got some like XYZ company, like, Hey Dale, can you yep. sponsor our software? But the ones that I know you work with, which you've mentioned is like Fiverr, dude, we've been working with Fiverr for, for they years. Yeah, no, that and, was your fault. Actually, I can blame you on that. <laughs> and that's what's cool about Dale. Just a quick interjection here is like five years ago, you had no freaking clue what Fiverr was as, and now, you know, you're getting paid by them to help promote their brand. So yep. to show people what an individual can do when they actually apply themselves and kick, you know, just put the F and work in. I mean, you're looking at Dale right now and he's, I mean, I'm sure you'll, you know, have many more to go, but anyways, you were saying warm prospecting, cold prospecting. So there's nothing wrong with cold prospecting. If you watch, like say Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk's all about reaching out to people and getting the rejections, go with the nose and such like that and be willing yeah. to work for free with people. And I, I love Gary's idea on some things. But I honestly have found great results in warm prospecting because I'm able to talk to people that I currently know that are inside my network, that I'm able to get referrals from people and get connections from people within my network. So it's a right. case of just like that seven degrees of seven, uh, seven degrees of separation with, with Kevin Bacon, heard, where yeah. if you can just find that connection that has that connection that has that connection and eventually you'll be able to get it to where you can warm prospect with some people. Um, but I always look for, first of all, I start out with affiliate marketing here, folks. If you can get affiliate marketing and you start working with that and you have proof of concept that you can start selling and driving traffic to people, then those brands and companies are willing to listen to you. Then you reach out to those brands and companies because you already have a little bit of an introduction because you're like, hey, guess what? My name's Dale. Um, I'm going to use Grammarly as an example. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Grammarly, I I've been selling about you know five to 10 licenses per week over the past year. Uh, would you be willing to sit on down and chat about some sponsorship opportunities? And that's probably a little bit, you know, uh, kind of a, but yeah, I get, that's a little get, blunt yeah. the way I'm doing it, <laughs> yeah. but you get the idea and you just build that bridge. One thing I recommend is this is if you're a good talker, get on video chat. I refuse to do business with anybody if they don't get on with me a video chat. Here's the deal. And especially so, I will not do business with a company that cold prospects me. Okay. I always tell them, you got to come over, do a video chat. Because here's the thing is, you got to, first of all, A, make sure they're legit and B, that they align with your, your values. And here's the cool thing is when you have someone face-to-face, -face, 
get ready for this. Okay. Cause you're going to pitch them how much you cost. You're going to talk to them about, okay, what is it that they're trying to sell? What do they want to accomplish through a sponsorship with you? Don't allow them to go ahead and cut you off. Be like, well, how much you cost? No, no, you control. You're in the driver's seat. Yeah. You go ahead and you talk with them and talk about, okay, what do you want to accomplish? What is it that you want to sell? How do you see yourself working with my brand? What is it that you would like to see ideally within X amount of time or one specific video or two videos or whatever you might be doing for the deal? And then go ahead and pitch the price. Mm -hmm. Be ready here, folks. This is going to feel weird. You're going to be really hot. You're going to probably like, if you've never pitched somebody before, you're going to be like, you're going to probably lean forward and be like, um, is you're going to, it's, it's going to be $10,000. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, you're going to have to make sure that Confident. you make, yeah. get yourself in front of a mirror, sit on down, be like very like confident about it. And you're going to look at that person. You're going to tell them, okay, I cost thousand dollars per asset, or maybe I cost 2000 or maybe it's $200 per asset whatever it might be, just be prepared. And as soon as you pitch it, here's the thing. It's all about good sales. Step back. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. I, I worked with somebody once before and I'm, I'm not going to name names. Um, I worked with somebody before and it was so funny. He pitched me his price for what he was doing his services. And I sat there and I'm like, I'm thinking, thinking. He's like, his original price was 800. Then he's like, how about 500? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, bro. I was like, I was just thinking, man. I was just thinking. I'm like, yeah. I was like, that's not how negotiations work. I'm supposed to say 500. <laughs> I was like, I've made that you. mistake before. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like you ought to, if you're dropping and you're negotiating on price, I mean, it can be, yeah, it, it can be bad. And I I've made it before. I don't know if you've made it before, but like, yeah, man, make them, make them, offer that first rejection and in oftentimes that first rejection is 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 no forever it, it could potentially be just no for right now and, yep. and then you uncover like well what is it really you know what's it going to take to to get you on board so yeah yep. um yep anyways, it, so it, you were you were saying in terms of of like you're negotiating with that that particular brand um yep. and, and value in your price i remember we were talking a couple months ago and you're telling mm -hmm. me like hey i initially i had locked in on this price and then i was like you know what i think i'm worth more let's like up it you know a little bit because you were bringing them clients and you were bringing them sales and stuff like that and i'm you know, charging right now five times as much as i did over a year ago because i started getting a better understanding of what my value was and what i was bringing to the table and I saw that it was like, it should be mutually advantageous when you're doing a sponsorship deal. You shouldn't just be taking money from your sponsor. I learned this from Andrew Edwards, another really big guy in the tech space. Mm -hmm. Look up Andrew, fantastic. Andrew dude. Edwards, yeah. A Andrew, uh, he does sponsorship deals and he, he said the same thing. And this is, I learned from him. He said, don't just go there just to get money from the sponsorship deal. You want to make sure they get a return on their investment because if they don't get a return on their investment, you need to make it good with them. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean paying back their money, but maybe you deliver additional assets. You mm -hmm. give them something more than what they anticipated. Maybe you follow up with them in some capacity, work something out to where they do get a return on their investment. You and want them to reason, stay on board long-term, really, if you can Correct. Help. Yeah, there needs to be a give and take relationship. You're not yeah. just taking money and they're like giving it all and going, well, I was expecting this type of return. So that's why it's important to set those expectations in advance. And this is why I was like, you know what? I'm like, I increased it. I, I doubled how much I was asking for. And then I consulted a friend of mine who was in the same self-publishing space. And she was like, oh my, no, 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 no. And I was like, really? Mm -hmm. And she's like, here's why X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh, I'm like, well, that makes sense. So yeah, it's don't be afraid to ask a little bit more and be willing to be flexible, but just know what's going to be your bargain basement price. Like you can't go any lower because if you go any lower, you put yourself into the red. And the whole thing right. is if you're going to start up a sponsorship deal. Don't put yourself into the red. You need to be functioning into the black to where you're actually getting something out of it. Because here's the thing. And this is also something I want to recommend. Uh, Harris Heller is the name of a gentleman. He's an influencer on YouTube. He has a channel called Alpha Gaming. And okay. uh, he talks about getting sponsorship deals. You're going to have some that will come to you and give you a free product if you do a free video for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a hard no. Yeah, All right. Better, now, be if, a, better be a Bentley or a Tesla or something if you, yeah, something cool because like that. It, 
because here's the thing is it requires <clears throat> your time. Okay. Yeah. They should automatically be giving you a free thing if they want you to look at it and consider it. The next thing to also think about is, do they have affiliate marketing? Okay, great. They got affiliate deals, then that might sweeten the deal. I would recommend that you find some type of an agreement for a stipend for your time. Because remember, videos don't edit themselves. Videos don't upload or promote themselves. Yeah. You've got to do that. So if you were just to take affiliate sales, that means you're saddling all the risk. I had a, had a company that reached out to me. They did a, um, we did a deal a while back. They came back to me again and they tried to say, mm, no, nah, you know, uh, we're just going to do the affiliate marketing. I was like, you understand I've got to pay video editor, right? Mm -hmm. And I also got to pay my assistant to help me manage this stuff. And on top of that, this devotes all of my time, energy, and attention into it. And they were like, uh, they were speechless. I'm like, you guys don't, don't just like have your employees come in and be like, we're going to give you free service. Well, not welcome. to mention you've spent five years or four years building this channel up, building your skills. And, you know, when, when you first started, we haven't even covered this, dude, you were doing everything yourself. You're editing the videos, you're editing oh, yeah. um, the thumbnails and, and you self-taught yourself all of this, you know? So yeah, man, like you set yourself through like basically video editing college. <laughs> yeah, it was and I, I remember walking into your studio and the, the, Columbus, the first, the one I, when I visited you, dude, and it's just yeah. like, man, it was like freaking looking behind the curtain in the, in the wizard of Oz, man. I was like, Whoa, like, this is crazy how much, you know, you've put into this. And I'm sure like, if we were to look behind what you have going on now, you know, is probably a pretty, the equipment investment just to, to, to do that, you know? Um, so yeah. So you basically told them, Hey, like, look, dude, like let's, let's, drop some dough on the table and we can talk right yeah 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 and you know it's 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 nothing no offense to them you know the answer is always going to be no if you never ask uh sure. so i wasn't offended by it when they do that but just just know your value folks uh if you feel your value is just getting free products in exchange for some videos then then great um but honestly um, it's going to take time, attention, and energy. So don't ever sell yourself short on that. And I'm not telling you that you need to be asking like, you got to give me $10,000 per video and you only have 10 subscribers, you know, and you've had five videos yeah. since you opened. You know, just you be build realistic. Up a, build your channel up first. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And the cool thing is with you, right? I mean, the, the higher your channel go grows and the more, you know, I mean, you'd be able to charge more down the road if, if you, yep. you know, open that up. And so, um, Okay, so we've I think we've covered most of your monetization That's strategies, it. correct? Is there anything else that you're doing in terms of well the books, I guess that could be a part of it as well. I mean Correct. Of, you, you, know, you had those other supplemental type areas, and I think it would be crazy that you and I wouldn't mention self publishing since yeah. you used to be <laughs> primarily focused on that and yeah. now I am. So Yeah. And then um and so we talked about how many videos you're doing per week now. Is it like three to four or are you kind of? In no, a I've scaled it back. I'm doing about one to three videos altogether. And that's including some of the live videos. Cause I found the more that I did, the more it started to, um, people weren't consuming as much. Cause the right. problem is being a utility channel. If you give too much information, it's almost like loading up your students with a bunch of homework. And mm. when that homework starts to pile up so much, you know, what's going to happen is they're just going to push it off to the side and go, oh, I'm going to get to it some someday eventually. And what ends up happening is they forget about that homework and never do that. So yeah. much rather than trying to pile all that stuff up, I try to get it to where it's in bite sized pieces. Yeah, man. I mean, I think if anybody's watched this video, hopefully they're still watching from the beginning. You know, some people do, some people don't. But man, like you've really, I think, in in this conversation have really shown a nice blueprint on like how to grow a channel, how to get sponsorships, uh, how to monetize, um, you know, I mean, just, just a nice value add for, for the, for the people. So I do thank you for that. Um, anything going for, are you doing coaching right now? Is there, if anybody's watching is, is a coaching door open or are you, are you shutting that? How's that working? The, uh, the coaching is open, but it's, it's selective. Uh, so just reach out to me at Dale at self publishing with Dale.com. It's a case by case basis. I don't work with everybody. I typically sit on down and we have like a 15 minute, um, chat to see if it's going to be a yeah. good fit because I don't work with a, a, just anybody. I'm sorry. Right. It's, it's just yeah. one of those cases that I only want to work with people that want it. 
And the people that just want me to just throw information at them, just go buy my course. Because if yeah. that's what you want out of me, then that's that's pr pretty much there. But yeah, I'm very selective with coaching. In the coaching, you have to have the right fit, man. Because then, then what happens if their expectation is like, hey, I'm going to get coaching from Dale. And all of a sudden, I'm going to get the exact same success as Dale. <laughs> it's going to take the, you know, you got to put the work in too, you know. Yeah, you got to um, put the work in for sure. I've coached some people and they've, they've had great smashing success. I mean, you can look at someone like a Keith Wheeler. Keith Wheeler books, he's actually over 10,000 subscribers. I think he told me he's up to 12,000 right now. Okay. Um, I coached him some time ago, but then there's been many other stories of people that the opposite and in, in the spectrum because yeah. they just didn't follow through on some of the coaching advice that I gave them. And that's, For that's sure. completely on them. So yeah, I'm not one of those type of people that'd be like, you're going to get coached by me and you're going to become a millionaire overnight. Can't. Anybody who says that run away. Don't go to them. Yeah. Well, we are running up on your, your moratorium of time here. Um, yeah. but is there anything else, man, that you want to you want to say to the viewers, any other projects you're working um, on as far as, um, you know, maybe touch on a little bit of the the new things that you were talking about as far as the, the book? Uh, what, were, um, what was the name? Book overhaul? The um, you're close. It's uh, it's book rescue. So book rescue. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, actually, it just started, uh, and I've worked out a three um, video series deal with Fiverr that there, we're going to be working on a show called Book Rescue. Essentially, I'm going to be reaching into the indie author community with some people that are not as fortunate, that have had fallen on some hard times, that need a little bit of help in publishing some of their books, and uh, you know, helping them out with covers. Um, helping them out with interior formatting, could be book descriptions, it could be keywords, things like that, marketing and promotion. And uh, we're going to chronicle the whole thing. Uh, so it's kind of like if you've ever seen Bar Rescue or even those of you that are old enough to remember this, let me know inside the comments, right. Pimp My Ride. So think of it like <laughs> Pimp My Ride for authors. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, essentially, we're going to be doing that. It's going to be uh, 20 to 22 minute episodes. And uh, we've got the pilot that we're already in the midst of shooting. I'm really, really excited about this because it's a way for me to give back to the indie author community because I've gotten so much from them. And beyond that, right now, I'm just uh, promoting my uh, current uh, trilogy series uh, called the Amazon Self Publisher. You can get a hold of Amazon keywords for books, promotional strategies for books, or Amazon reviews for books when you visit dalelinkcom slash ASP as an Amazon Self Publisher. Dude, Dale, you're the man. I Definitely want to, I mean, I know we could probably talk for five hours. I know you and Kelly are going <laughs> to enjoy some uh, fantastic vegan burgers here uh, pretty soon, but um, I really appreciate you jumping on here, Dale. Every link that Dale discussed here will be in the description. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. If you guys have any interest in self-publishing, make sure you go check Dale's channel out. This guy is, is fantastic. Not only does he know self-publishing, he knows YouTube sponsorship branding. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing his channel grow. And uh, Dale, thanks once again for being on. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video. And, and recording.